Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 56. Every time an Oscar is given out, an agent gets his wings. Kathy Bates. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my Indie Film Hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Don't forget to head over to freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com to download your free film audiobook from Audible. And today's show is sponsored by Filmmaking Hacks, how to shoot and market your independent film. Head over to filmmakinghacks.com. That's filmmakinghacks.com to download a discounted version of the course. So guys, today we're going to tackle a question that um, I get asked all the time, uh, and it's a question I've asked myself so many times during my career. Do you need an agent to make it in Hollywood? Do you need an agent to get you work? Well, it's a catch-22, guys. It's the egg, the chicken and the egg. See, the way it works is that agents uh, and, and managers, uh, which are there, are they are different, and I'll explain the difference in a minute, but agents uh, specifically don't want you until you can make money for them and you can't make money for them until you have them uh, in a lot of ways. So it becomes a catch-22 um, for the artist. So the way you should walk into uh, or when you start looking for an agent is when you have something to offer an agent. When you have, um, That's why when you see these young directors get picked up at Sundance, agents are all over them because they know they can sell them easy. Uh, and that's the thing. Agents want to be able to sell and make money off of you because that's their job. They're there to represent you, get you work, and then they make a commission off that. If it's a hard sell, then they're going to be exerting a lot of energy and not making a lot of ROI or return on investment. So when you have, a, when you, like, perfect example is you, you're a director, you've directed a few things, you haven't really made anything big yet, you haven't even made a feature film yet, you've just been doing a lot of shorts or a lot of really low-budget features that haven't really seen any light of day, and you start looking for a, an agent, agent's not going to look at you because unless that agent sees something in you that they say, oh, I can go sell that, I can sell this, I can make money with this, then maybe that's the story of what happened with Robert Rodriguez uh, when Robert had just got to town with El Mariachi and a short film. He met the, an agent, a young agent, who now is one of the biggest agents, directing agents in Hollywood. But at the time, he was a, a, a young agent, still an, age, you know, a, an agent coming up, but an agent nevertheless. And he saw what Robert did with El Mariachi. He said, I can sell this. And he took a chance on Robert. And within a matter of a few weeks, he was the toast of the town. And those are the legendary stories that you hear of what agents can do for directors. But those are, again, as always, lottery ticket examples. They're not, they, they're the exception. They're definitely not the norm. It does happen, but not often. So to be more pragmatic about how to approach an agent is when you have something you can sell, when you have a feature film, when you have some heat on you when you've won a major award at a major festival, um, when you just sold a big um, a big movie to you know let's say you made an independent film an action movie and you were able to sell it for a million dollars, and now you have um, you know a successful feature under your belt. All of a sudden, you become much more appetizing to agents to be able to be picked up from an agency. And even then, there's hierarchies of agencies. Either you're not going to want to get picked up by a big agency right away. You don't want to be picked up by a CAA right away because you'll be one of a million clients that they're dealing with and they're only going to be focusing a lot of their energy on the big ticket guys the guys who are bringing in the 5 10 million 20 million dollar paydays because that's where that's where the agency makes the most money again guys this is a business this is nothing personal it's a this is a business so i would start off with a smaller agency and have because that way they will give you more attention they you are one of a few as opposed to one of many in a stable so I would I would focus on getting smaller agencies to pick you up if you have an opportunity to get picked up at all. I have a, a friend of mine who's a screenwriter, and he won um, he won a really big screenwriting competition, multiple of them actually. And because of that, he got an agent. That agent sat on his ass for I'm going to say a year and a half, two years. Never got him a dime. Never sent him out on anything. He just signed him. And basically, my poor buddy just hung out and tried to 
hustle work. And and then basically anytime he had a job or he had a, a job that he found himself, he would go to the agent and the agent would negotiate it for him, you know, which is hilarious. Uh, and then the agent would take 10% for doing nothing, really, literally doing nothing. Didn't get him any work. So that's what happens sometimes when you get an agent. It's not all it's, not all it's cracked up to be. Just because you get an agent doesn't mean that you're going to automatically start getting checks sent to you or you're going to be going out for these big major movies or a TV show uh, directing gig uh, or commercials or music videos or anything like that. It doesn't happen that way. It takes time. So you have to walk into a negotiations with an agent or an agency in, an, in a position of power, in a position of offering them value. You are selling yourself to them in that sense because you want them to help you get work and you have to show that you have, if you're a writer, you don't have one script. You've got 10 scripts in your bag as well as a couple of pilots and maybe a web series or two. That way they have something that they can go out and sell. Directors, if you're a direct, a writer director, you better have two or three scripts back to back. You already have your next project lined up. If you have your next project lined up, with financing already, and there and this agency is going to help you package this next movie. Boom! That's a great marriage made in heaven, right there, because they can start making money with you. You can start leveraging their resources to help you get get bigger, get faster, and grow your career at a at a, cl- a faster clip. Again, it's mutual, guys. You can't walk into an agent's office and just go, "What can you do for me? What can you do for me? What can you do for me?" Because that's not the way it works. It's a mutual, beneficial relationship. And you have to be able to offer them something. And you also have to make sure you find an agency and an agent that's going to offer you something in return and not just sign you just to sign you and sit you on a shelf somewhere. So that happens all the time. The second that they think they can sell you and they can't, all of a sudden you become chopped liver. They throw you up on the shelf and they never and you never hear from them. They never work for you. And there you go. So, uh, and the difference, by the way, guys, between an agent and a manager, an agent is, is about getting you work. It's about going out there and getting you work while a manager manages your career. They kind of guide you. They're your financial planner instead of your stockbroker. Your, your stockbroker is there to make a commission and sell and, and sell you stocks and get you, you know, get you uh, stocks and sold. While a, a, a business manager um, or a a uh, manager in general, they're there to manage everything. They're looking at long-term um, goals as opposed to short-term gains. So that's what a manager is. I always say try to get a good manager first before you go after an agent. That way uh, you have um, someone that can help guide you throughout your career as opposed to just going out and getting you work. And the manager, a good manager is there through the thick and through the thin. They are there when you are getting your Oscar and you're there, they're there when nobody returns your calls. And that's what a good manager does. They manage your career and they guide you in a way that will hopefully take your career to the next level. So hope this episode helped you guys out a little bit in regards to an agent and what it needs, to, what you need to do to get an agent. Uh, and if you even need an agent right now, don't always forget, you might not need an agent at the beginning of your career. It, it's actually kind of a waste because they're not, unless they're going to go knock on doors for you, which chances are they're not, I would wait until you have something to offer them again before you go out and looking for an agent, all right? Um, Don't forget to head over to filmmakingpodcast.com, filmmakingpodcast.com, and leave us a review, a good review, hopefully, um, for our show. It really helps us out a lot. Um, All the show notes for this episode are on indiefilmhustle.com forward slash 056. Also, guys, don't forget that we are still taking members of our launch team for the Anya crowdfunding campaign that we're going to be launching uh, in the next coming weeks. So uh, don't forget if you are interested in being part of the launch team and getting inside access on how we actually do this crowdfunding campaign, uh, head over to launch at or email launch at IndieFilmHustle.com, launch at IndieFilmHustle.com. And if you want to sign up uh, to find out when we're going to release this awesome full access membership site to the entire process of how we make this movie, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash full access. Keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 